this time uh, to move to the moment we've been all waiting for, which is the unveiling of the E4M Inca Influencer Marketing Report. For this, may I now welcome on the stage and screen, Ashwin Padmanabhan, President of the Partnership and Trading Group M to unveil the E4M Inca Influencer Marketing Report. Well, with this, I'd really like to heartily welcome him on the screen. Thank you so much, Ashwin, for joining us. The stage and screen is all yours. Thanks, Bhavna, and thanks, Nawal, for a fantastic introduction to what we've tried to create together here. Uh, uh, everyone, I hope you're all doing well, uh, and I'm actually delighted to be with you for the launch of the E4M Inca, India Influencer Marketing Report 2021. Uh, not just here in India, but uh, across our regional offices in Singapore, who have worked tirelessly to kind of put this industry report. This has never been tried or done earlier, and it required a huge amount of effort to pull this off. So thank you so much uh, uh, for putting this together and making this uh, happen. Uh, we all know that over the last few years, uh, influencer marketing you know, has become an industry now. It's not uh, something which people try and do for a hobby. It's become an industry and it's grown exponentially. Um, in fact, uh, influencer marketing has become an important part of uh, our media, Group M's media recommendations to brands. Uh, that's how important uh, it's become a part of the marketing mix. And authenticity and trust. I feel these are the two things that embody the relationship between the influencer and the audiences. And we've got brands who are seeking influencers and working with them to basically replicate the same trust with the audiences. Uh, and we're happy uh, to see that more and more brands are recognizing this power of influencer marketing and making it an important uh, pillar of their brand strategy. Uh, we all have seen the pandemic, uh, you know, kind of accelerate the digital adoption in the country. We already had more than 400 million people who had access to social media before the pandemic. And uh, parallelly, we've seen close to $1 billion plus of investments to build apps and other infrastructure to create and engage more audiences. So clearly, this number has got a huge flip now. Uh, but beyond numbers, I feel the significant shift in consumer behavior uh, is a real fuel for growth. And we've seen it across spectrums, whether it's direct to consumer businesses or more traditional sectors. Uh, everybody's understood the power of digital in making the life of consumers simpler uh, and, and, and a better access to those consumers. Um, while influencer marketing is still nascent, uh, and we believe we've just discovered the tip of the iceberg, as the, as the influencer industry continues to evolve, uh, we felt it was, there was a strong need to quantify, define, and organize the space. And thus, the India Influencer Marketing Report was born, um, where we try to highlight some interesting findings on the growth of influencer marketing in India and the trends to follow. Um, the unique advantage of digital is its duality. You know, in other words, uh, it can act as an independent medium. It can also become a measurement tool for traditional mediums as well. And, and with that, let me quickly take you through what we believe are a few trends that will shape influencer marketing this decade. And one of them, which we've seen evolve over the past 18 months in a big way, I think is the rise and rise of the direct to consumer brands. Um, in, fact, in fact, as per Avengers Capital, uh, India has already got about 600 plus D2C brands. And almost all of these brands have worked with influencers uh, to not just drive awareness, but consideration, and in some cases, even purchase. So influencer marketing, in fact, will be at the core of any D2C brand's marketing strategy. And I see extremely interesting collaborations evolving between influencers and these brands. The other piece which will define uh, the way influencer marketing grows uh, in the coming years will be measurement and accountability. And I feel as measurement and accountability comes in, um, influencer marketing will become mainstream. Uh, metrics like cost per engagement, cost per sales, return on ad spend, all of these will start becoming important and we will have tools to measure them. We already have those tools, in fact, as we speak. And this will give that much needed uh, credibility to influencer marketing. Uh, the third piece which we feel will change and we'll see more and more of will be the influencer commerce uh, will become an integral part of a brand sales channel mix. And I think this is especially true 
of the D2C brands. We have specialist platforms like Trail, for example, or e-commerce platforms like um, our own client, Mintra, uh, and the social platforms like Instagram, which have taken the lead in this area. Uh, while most have stayed in the space of demand generation and order taking, but I think we're going to see a full funnel uh, experience for consumers very soon. And I see new business models emerging here. Uh, the other interesting bit is that uh, the influencer universe, the, the ecosystem of influencers itself will expand both in depth and width. And this is being driven by the rise of Indian short video platforms like Takata, Josh, Raposo, Marge, as well as vernacular social and content platforms like ShareChat and Daily Hunt. We're observing an explosion in the talent as well as the audiences that are coming onto these platforms. So clearly we're going to see an explosion in the influencer universe as well. And, and finally, uh, there's going to be an interesting play between influencers and their audiences. Uh, our tools are going to become more sophisticated uh, in understanding the audiences that the influencers have. Uh, campaign planning will become more data driven and, uh, and we will get some precious insights which will be invaluable for a marketer. Uh, just a small example, uh, in Inca, we've seen things like, for example, nano influencers drive a 10x engagement to a macro influencer or a, even a celebrity. But on the flip side, a macro influencer drives 15x views to a piece of content versus a micro influencer. So clearly, the choice of the, the campaign objectives will define how, uh, you know, you, which influencer type to use, whom do you work with? And a lot of this will come through data and analytics. And these were some of the trends I wanted to touch upon. And you will get a very detailed overview of some of these trends in the report itself and in the following sessions. Uh, uh, and we have some interesting panels ahead. Uh, influencer marketing is clearly here to stay and will keep growing. Uh, this report is gonna be free to download and please do use it and uh, take tips from it. And like Naval said right up front, give us feedback. And as we evolve, a lot more to this report. Uh, thank you, take care, and hope you all stay safe and healthy. Uh, I would like to call upon my colleague, Kunal Savan, the business head for Inca India, to now take you through the E4M Inca India Influencer Marketing Report. Over to you, Kunal. Thanks, 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 Ashwin. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, is as follows. One is we're going to showcase the kind of work that we've done in, in the last year or so. Uh, the video will also probably capture the capabilities of the tool. Post that, we've kept one very interesting interactive session. Uh, what I would request is please keep your phones ready. You'll have to scan a QR code and it's a very simple poll. Yeah. Followed by, I will take you through some key highlights of the report. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and play one AV.
that's the kind of work that we've done in the last uh, last year year and a half uh, plus the kind of capabilities that the tool also has right from uh, helping brands uh, choose the right creators uh, audience which matters to them as well as content guidelines format guidelines doing competition analysis and so on and so forth uh, what i'm going to now request each one of you is is to take out your phones uh, you need to scan the qr code which is right in front of you you're going to do a small poll uh, the objective of this poll is is to drive two hypotheses probably we are able to arrive that so please take out your smartphones scan the qr code and wait for my instructions i'm going to just toggle the screen now okay uh, once again either either you log in through through your web browser using slido.com and the hashtag and and the password which is hashtag 371879 or you can scan the qr code which is right in front of you i'll wait for a, for a, for half a minute and maybe then we can start the poll uh, these are all all run of the mill questions nobody is checking your intelligence here these are very very simple questions uh, i'm going to start with the poll right away okay the first question for you is uh, have you indulged in cooking referring to a cooking video online in the last 18 months once again the qr code is still there in front of you for people who want to start now they can also do it let's wait for a minute uh, currently almost 85% of the audience which is taking part in this particular poll have at least referred once online looking for a cooking video indulged into cooking in the last last 18 odd months it's 90% by now okay i'm moving to the next question thanks for everyone who's participating uh who's the second biggest male influencer by follower count on instagram you might know the first one uh let's see how many of us know who's the second largest male influencer by follower count salman khan by default it becomes narendra pm narendra modi k okay. salman is very close we'll wait for for another few seconds and then then just carry on okay so there is a tough between pm narendra modi and salman khan uh the correct answer is pm narendra modi it's not a bollywood celeb the first one by the way is virat kohli who's got 153 million have you consumed any audio content online online in the last 18 months Eighty percent. Uh, so 80% of us have consumed some content online in the last 18 months that clearly says the rise and spike in in audio consumption 83% down i am moving to the next question uh how many followers does virat kohli have on instagram more than the population of australia more than circulation of largest print daily more than the daily reach of the number one gc channel more than the weekly reach of the largest radio station or all of the above i think this is pretty simple straightforward more than the population of australia okay 83% feel that he's he's more than everything else that's probably the right answer australia's population is 2 and a half crore he's got 12 and a half crores in his follower base i'm moving to the next question uh who do you think is the largest female influencer on instagram from below not overall but out of the four mentioned below who do you think is the largest female influence komal pandey 75% of us feel komal pandey not kusha kapila not dolly singh not anum anum darbar but komal pandey is by far the largest one okay to surprise everyone the correct answer is anam darbar and not kusha kapila the next on your screen is who is the largest youtuber amongst them in india 
out of the four mentioned below is it total gaming uh, round to hell nisha madulika or bbk wines bbk wines uh, sorry it's moving now let's wait definitely bbk wines uh, again to your surprise it is not bbk wines it is total gaming have you ever purchased a product or brand only because someone else referred it to you have you ever done that have you changed your purchase decision or or bought it just because somebody else told you? 83% of us feel that we purchased a product or a brand only because someone else referred to us it's become 85 uh, let's let the counter be at 30 and then i'm 80 79% of us feel that we bought a product just because somebody else referred to us. Excellent. Uh, who do you think has the highest engagement rate on Instagram? Engagement rate is nothing else, accumulation of all the interactions that you get divided by the number of followers. Virat Kuli, Hadik Pandya, nobody for Sachin Tendulkar or Rohit Sharma. We all feel that Virat Kuli currently has the highest engagement rate on Instagram. 23 respondents will wait for 30 and then move on. Sachin Tendulkar is the least as per the poll right now. Uh, again, to, to your surprise, Rohit Sharma is the correct answer and not Virat Kohli. Uh, have you looked for online reviews, coupon codes before making a purchase decision? Have you ever done that? There are people who never done it. Okay. Excellent. Superb. So eighty two percent of us did look for for some kind of review or coupon code. The last question on your screen is who do you think has the largest female follower base amongst the one mentioned, mentioned below? Shahrukh Khan, Ankit Batla, uh, Roshni Walia, or Nisha Madhulika? Who amongst them has the highest or the largest female follower base? Nisha Madhulika is at 33, Shahrukh Khan is at 38. Okay. Uh, Shahrukh Khan by far, 67% followed by Nisha Madhulika, then Ankit and then Roshni Walia. Sorry to disappoint you, but Ankit Batla has the highest follower base when it comes to female, uh, highest base of female followers and not Shah Rukh Khan. When we started the poll, uh, so the poll ends here. Thank you so much for everyone who's participated. Uh, when we started the poll, we said we will, we will try and, uh, you know, come to two hypotheses, right? The two hypotheses are one, uh, we all have been exposed to or have been consuming influencer content in some form or the other. The second is uh, there is definitely a need for database planning. At times, our intuition, our gut feel might not be correct, and we need uh, a solid AI-driven platform to help us make the right creator selection. Thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed this poll. Uh, what I'm going to now do is I'm going to talk about a few key highlights of of the report. Uh, while I will also show, uh, put up a QR code here and you have an option to just scan the QR code and download the entire report. I'm going to quickly brief through few key highlights. We put them in three broad sections. What's in the future? Okay, Ashwin has already spoken about a few trends that we see post pandemic. Okay, we will touch upon that. What do marketers actually feel? What are their pain points? What are their challenges? And what is the current state of industry? There are the three sections that I will cover in the next 10 minutes. Uh, let's look at what's there in the future. This this uh, section. Sorry, I'm just quickly doing a, a audio check. Am I am I audible to all? Yes, can sorry. can anyone of you just confirm? Excellent. Thank you, thank you so much. So trends that will shape the industry. Uh, Ashwin has briefly already spoken about it. In fact, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. Direct to consumer definitely a big big area. As Ashwin already said, there are almost 600 plus plus brands. Measurability and accountability is is not only one of the biggest challenges for marketers, but that's actually the elephant in the room. Probably creators and the platforms both will come together and come at a unified currency later. 
influencer commerce uh, definitely one one big area and we will also talk about it at at a later point influencer universe will expand both in depth and with as well as there will be heightened need for for scientific creator selection which also talks to the right audience let's move on to the new formats while there are there are several traditional formats which are already available there are four key formats which we've kind of identified and we would like to talk about it now one is the audio format uh, let's go back to the poll a small poll that we did 5 minutes back most of us in the last 18 months have have already consumed some amount of audio what audio does is is basically uh, it it allows you to do uh, do multitasking at the same time right plus it gives you a captive audience as well short form video formats i think even novel spoke at the beginning of the of the conference as well right where there are number of platforms which have already opened up is the best way to engage with with the millennials and the gen z is to create a short snackable engaging content that's what what they want and the platform really really fulfills that demand in a very large way live streaming again most of us would have exposed to a live streaming either looking for for uh, some of our favorite celebrities perform live right or we would have taken a master class with a popular chef or we would have done shopping looking at uh, looking at our popular uh, creators right social commerce again uh, this trend is is pretty much already there in china and korea okay almost almost 16% of the total retail sales today is online social today if you look at social universe out of the 600 million people who are on digital almost 400 of them are already on social media so high social media uh, audience plus growth of e-commerce is only one of fuel social commerce in a very very large way next i move to uh, to the ascii guidelines uh self regulation will drive transparency what we actually mean here is one uh, looking at the kind of investments that that brands are today doing on influencer marketing there was anyways a need for some amount of regulation in this industry and the new ascii guidelines are definitely a welcome move which will bring in not only some amount of regulation but it will also build in transparency transparency and accountability both from a platform perspective as well as as a creator perspective as well there are various disclosure labels the report uh, dutch does talk about them in detail hence i am not uh, covering this here but yes there is definitely a need to reinforce and educate all these guidelines time and again although we also have an elaborate panel session on sk guidelines later in the day next i will i will now talk about uh, what does our marketers also say okay Uh, what we've done is a small survey uh, with with couple of our brands okay and what uh, and i'm going to now talk about certain findings which also talk about problem statements and as well as why do actually brands invest in marketing primarily okay uh, so one is, is is driving consideration while popular misconception would be that influencer marketing at this is top of the funnel and and probably awareness is the only objective that we can actually fulfill Uh, I am happy to share that most of the marketers uh, today invest on influencer marketing to drive consideration, which is again a very very big plus point. Okay, the other two aspects which have come out in a very a very big way is is virality of content. So most of the times you would have realized that a content created by a creator will have much more probability of going viral as compared to a brand name. I am not saying it might not go; it might as go as well. but the probability of 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 going viral for for a creator content is far far higher second is engagement uh, while uh, engagement is one of the most common metrics for all the brands to measure the success of influencer marketing campaign it definitely drives business growth as well if you look at several reports okay so while i've given some numbers like 400 million are already on social media 67% of them already follow one or two followers it also corroborates with what the poll that we did at the beginning right plus 41% of the respondents have said that they bought a product because somebody has has influenced them in buying that again a very very big plus for influencer marketing as an industry i keep reminding there is a qr code on the right uh, you can scan the qr code and you can download the entire report please share your feedback eager to hear you next is trust credibility which actually drives uh, customer acquisition now if you look at uh, influencer marketing the two biggest pillars why do brands partner with uh, with with uh, content creators is to ride on trust and credibility which these creators any which was enjoy with their niche audience and that's why brand wants to partner with them so trust and credibility not just drives customer acquisition but those are the true big pillars of influencer marketing 
the report then also talks about uh, 10 key benefits of influencer marketing okay right from uh, increasing brand recall high quality cont content so and so forth it, it largely covers everything that you can think of of why brands today are investing on influencer marketing the next aspect is e-commerce e e i've spoken uh, at, about it briefly at the beginning also even ashwin touched, touched base but that's a trend that we are we are foreseeing that in the next six to twelve months social commerce or e-commerce will become a very very large category on, on influencer marketing uh, let's let's also talk about certain challenges which the marketers are facing and this has also come out of our brand survey okay the the one of the key challenges which brands have have identified is keeping up with trends and how to understand a different content field uh, while, while this industry is is extremely volatile, evolving by the day, there are new uh, there are new uh, platforms getting launched. There are new formats getting launched. Long format platforms are launching shorter format options. While the shorter format options are also exploring to you know gear up for longer format content. All of them today are also gearing up for the social commerce boom. Of course, it's it's an ever evolving uh, scenario, and you need the right partners who understand the ecosystem very well. Okay. Choosing the right creator has been one of the biggest pain points uh, and uh, and maybe the poll will give you some glimpse of what I'm trying to say. At times we, we go by names or by gut feel, but what we require is, is a data back scientific way of choosing the influencers and not just by intuition. And this is where platforms like Inca come into the picture, which, which make your decisions far more data driven rather than intuition based. Okay, measuring the campaign ROI, we've, we've kind of spoken about it already multiple times. We also have a detailed panel discussion chaired by Maps. You want to do that uh, later in the day. Okay, uh, another two aspects which is brand safety and authenticity. So, bot stroke fake followers is one of the pain points of this industry. They eat almost 15% of the total budgets. So, so that's 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 a sizable amount. How can uh, platforms which are AI and ML driven help verify? authenticity, credibility, and suitability for a particular brand. That's also a big challenge, which can be resolved through a tech-enabled platform. Uh, I'm going to now quickly speak about certain industry landscape. Uh, happy to share uh, the estimated size of influencer marketing is, is close to 900 pros exit 2021, uh, growing at, an, uh, at, at a CAGR of almost 25% exit 2025. This is going to be a 2200 crore industry so by no means uh, it, it's it's a small industry uh, if you if you speak to brands there are separate budgets now earmarked only for influencer marketing earlier it might be camouflaged between either digital budgets or let's say uh, content budgets but most of the marketers today have separate budgets for influencer marketing uh, most of them what they said is or in fact more than 50 percent of the respondents have indicated that they're going to increase their influencer marketing spend by almost 25 to 30 percent extremely strong growth potential for this industry uh, which are the top categories so we've kind of dwelled into uh, looked at uh, the inca tech tool and kind of well in terms of which are the top categories which which advertise on influencer marketing uh, so if you look at the top three <clears throat> which is personal care food and beverage and fashion these three con dominate almost 55 percent of the volumes on influencer marketing followed by mobile, auto, telecom, BFSI, so and so forth. But, but the three categories, large categories, are personal care, food and beverage, and fashion. I am moving to the, to the last slide. Uh, the QR code on the right uh, takes you to the entire report. You can scan it, download the entire report. Okay. So while 900 crores is, is defined as the size of the industry, how much do influencers contribute? How much do celebrities contribute? Okay, we've also defined on the right, you would see defined uh, different uh, uh, types of creators. So a nano creator is someone who's got 10,000 and less followers. A micro creator <coughs> will have 10,000 to a lakh creators. A macro creator has, has more than a lakh but less than a million. Mega is, is more than a million. And celebrities are, are those who've got alternate careers, either a sports uh, person or, or maybe a Bollywood uh, uh, celebrity. Okay. Uh, influencers today dominate 73% of the spends as compared to celebrities which which dominate 27% of the spends if you look at uh, different campaign you know campaign objectives in fact the creator selection is uh, largely defined by the camp uh, by the campaign objective so let's say if the campaign objective is to drive awareness okay 
then reach becomes the KPI and hence the creator selection. Likewise, if let's say consideration, driving consideration is the campaign objective, then maybe engagement becomes the KPI and hence the creator selection. Each campaign that you've seen is, is uh, very, very customized. So there is nothing called as one size fits all here. With that, I, I come to an end to this presentation. The QR code here uh, takes you to the entire, can, helps you download the entire report. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope this was insightful. Please share your feedback on the report, eager to hear you. Thank you so much.